Okay. Hey, I'm Seth Johnson with Land a House. Welcome to Micro Hydro Series 2 here on the channel. I'm here with my friend and neighbor Nathan, the Homestead on the Mountain YouTube channel. Link in the description if you want to see a different perspective on this install. In the previous episode, we drug the 600 foot of inch and a quarter poly pipe up the mountain. And today we're going to be installing the screened intake in this little pool right here. We're going to dig this out a bit, make a little dam, and then we'll have our screens in here, which will take two inch and a quarter lines down to our 55 gallon drum. And that will be our silt free, air free source of water that will take the water down this inch and a quarter to the turbine. Two pipes are coming out, right? Two pipes out yeah, and the so, uh, three here, screens in. Here. They'll be pretty much like uh, this right here. It's kind of what I was thinking. We'll have okay. two out and then one, two, three going in. Gotcha. Okay, so pretty close. Yeah. This is a big boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I like that ball. Let's put it back. Yeah. Can I keep that one? <laughs> Bring that one home. I one. like that one in that one. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just pull my backpack. Yeah. Ooh, okay, we now have this pool cleared of all the rocks. We're going to put a piece of plastic in here to hold the water in and then get our screened intakes set in place. We have now finished putting plastic here to make our little pool to get the water from. And here is the manifold we've come up with. So it's got three screened inputs and it's gonna have two inch and a quarter outputs. And this right here is the screened intake. It's a three inch piece of PVC pipe with a bunch of holes drilled into it. Has some metal screen on top, capped on one end, and the other end has an inch and a quarter threaded piece here and that will go onto these threaded pieces here. I'm wanting to do it and not knowing how to do it or what's the most efficient way. Where I forgot one fitting back down at the house and just made the trek back up, so I'm tired. We have our intake submerged and it's got two full streams coming out and we pulled the excess inch and a quarter pipe past our blue barrel back down to where the turbine is going to be and we cut off the excess and so this is what we have here probably somewhere around 40 foot maybe uh, so we're going to use that to span from here to our barrel down here and that should fill that up nice and quickly you can see the flow rate here is definitely two full sections so we're expecting good results from this it's time to get our barb fitting here on the poly pipe Probably won't hold that yet. <laughs> a little bit lower. So I'm gonna heat it up with the torch here. Let's see if that's good. Not quite. <laughs> More heat should have been applied. <laughs> Brute force always works. Got it. All right. Sometimes. Nice. This is low pressure here anyway, so it shouldn't have much of a problem. Water's gonna be coming out the other end. Oh yeah. We still manage though. All right. Nice. Sinking down pretty quick. Now that we have the intake, the screened intake coming down from right up there, we've got somewhere between three and four foot of drop to our 55 gallon barrel. We've put a unisill here on this side. We just used a hole saw and plopped that unisill in there. If you want to check out unisill, I've got a link in the description down below. It is a little rubber grommet that allows you to access the tank without having to get inside 
to use a bulkhead. It's very, uh, very helpful. So this is going to have two inlets here on this side. We're gonna cut our pipe so that it has about a foot or so of excess in there to hold it in. And then later, we will be installing a valve so we can flush silt that builds up in the bottom of this barrel. The barrel does two things. It provides an air-free source for the uh, turbine and also catches that silt there in the bottom. Anyways. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the pipe here with our pipe cutters. And I'm gonna come back pretty far so that it's not gonna back up out of this barrel. Right there, I'm gonna do it. If it's too far, we can cut some more. What's the chances of me getting wet here? 100%. Oh, God. All right, here's the 100%. Ah. <laughs> All right. Very nice. It's a bit hard to see, but we have this pipe down here. I'm gonna use a inch and a quarter ball valve to stop this. Fixing the dam back with a bunch of rocks now that the pipes are at the lowest point. And we have enough water that the pipes are full and we still have water that's going to be overflowing the dam here pretty soon. Let's walk down here and you'll see the flow rate coming out of the 55 gallon barrel. We will be taking a five gallon bucket to measure this here in just a moment to see what our flow rate is. It's looking pretty good right there. We're gonna use a five gallon bucket to get the flow rate here. Basically the math is 300 divided by the seconds. So I've got my stopwatch here. I'm gonna set this under here and start the stopwatch. All right. We'll just do one pass and call that 22 seconds. So 300 divided by 22 is 13.6 gallons per minute coming out of our system right now. I'm gonna be installing a valve and this piece of pipe will go into the unisil. I've taken a file and kind of filed it down a little bit and it should make it a little bit easier to get in here. It'd be nice if I had some detergent, but this should work okay. I managed you to push on that side just to give some, some force. Yeah, there we go. Nice, got it. And now I'm going to glue this fitting on here, which will allow us to go from socket to threads. We brought this board up here that we're going to support the pipe with. That way it's not flexing the unisil. So we're just basically gonna have enough rocks stacked up that this will be up under there to hold it up enough that it's not going to flex. Okay, we go ahead and get this inch and a quarter valve installed. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get the pin stock onto our barrel here. Got it. Probably still warm. Oh yeah, it's time to clamp it. Here's the current completed setup. We may come back later and adjust this some if it starts to build up a lot of silt and sediment. But for now, it is working quite well. The three different screens are catching water. It goes down these two inch and a quarter pipes. comes down to the 55 gallon barrel. We suck them in about a foot and a half so that they wouldn't be coming back out. 
Then we have this temporary setup over here. We're gonna come back and add a couple of four by fours to support this better because when this pipe fills with water, it's gonna be pretty heavy. We have a nice valve here that should withstand the weather well. And then we have our cutoff over here. We can drain the silt and also keep it closed when we're needing to use this. Well, it's taken a couple of hours, but uh, we've gotten it done up to this point. The next video, we're gonna head down to the end of our pin stock and cap that off and get a pressure reading. So hopefully we'll be making well over 200 watts with this system. That's the goal. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. He's living That's off grid and uh, yeah. 200 plus watts would be fantastic. Fantastic, I mean, <laughs> power galore when you're living off grid. Yep. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. Remember to subscribe. If you want to check out a different aspect of this build, check out the Homestead on the Mountain. It's his YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, he'll probably have lots of updates on this yep. over the years. So, but uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.